Good morning, Atlantis, and happy Space Day. Good morning, Bill, and thanks for the salute to the military folks this morning, especially uh, those of us in the Air Force on board uh, celebrating our 50th anniversary. Appreciate that. Well, happy birthday to the Air Force, and the music was courtesy of the West Point Cadet Glee Club. Go Air Force, beat Army. And the BioRack ground team wants to express their sincere gratitude for that. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, Peter, the BioRack uh, chief uh, project manager in ESA, who is uh, ending here his long career working uh, biology experiment in this, uh, in this facility, BioRack. And as you can see, he's out of control now. Roger. Atlantis Houston, a new orbiter state vector is being uplinked. Roger. I understand we have a Naval Academy uh, around 77 time frame, 19th company member down there. Be good to see you down. It'll be good to see you in another day or two.
Good morning to all of you. Jerry, the last time we talked... Good morning, Ann. Nice to hear you. Jerry, the last time we talked, you predicted that you'd be feeling pure joy on this journey home. Is that what's going through you right now? Absolutely. Uh, elation. I'll tell you, when I saw the shuttle out the window, uh, that was one happy moment. It was a beautiful sight. So I predicted that one correctly. <laughs> well, two reasons why you're pretty happy is that you've got an 18-month-old son named John waiting for you. Also, your wife, Catherine, who is eight months pregnant. Have you thought about those first few moments you're going to have with them? Yeah, somewhat. I think that's going to be pure elation also. Uh, you know, my son's changed a lot in those 18 months, and uh, my wife's grown a bit. Uh, but it's going to be a fantastic uh, moment. I'm sure we're just going to hug, out, hug each other and do normal things that people that are separated from loved ones do. In fact, talking about walking, you've been doing your best to keep in shape while in space. And it's being reported that you're determined to walk off the shuttle after it lands. Um, why are you so determined to walk off? Because some of the astronauts have been carried off the, the shuttle after all this time in space. As you say, I've been working very hard, and uh, it's one of my goals to come back in condition. Uh, to be able to egress from the shuttle, I think that's important operationally to know that uh, in an emergency you'd be able to get off the shuttle. So it's been kind of beyond that. It's just been a personal goal uh, to keep running on the treadmill two hours a day takes a lot of determination and to have a goal to walk off the shuttle gave me something to shoot for. But Mission Control certainly has had to tell you, prepare you for what you probably will expect in terms of coming back into, coming back into Earth's atmosphere, how that's going to impact you. Uh, it's going to be physiolo physiologically a big challenge. Uh, I think I'm going to have a lot of adrenaline flowing and I think I'll be able to get off on my own power. Uh, I may have to crawl a little bit to get out of the orbiter. It's very hard, even when you're feeling good, to get out of the orbiter uh, because of the, the arrangement, the spacesuit you're wearing. you got uh, being weighed down by the spacesuit and, of course, the first field of gravity for, uh, for this year, basically, for myself. Uh, last January is the last time I felt any uh, pull of gravity. So it's going to be interesting and uh, I'm, I'm partially doing it also as a physician. I'm kind of interested in uh, the response of the human body to long-duration space flight, and so I'm going to test myself. You know, after all of this is said and done, you're going to hold the record for having the you're going to hold the record for having the longest period in space as an American astronaut, 132 days in space. How does that make you feel? Actually, it makes me feel good because I'm number two. Uh, Shannon uh, Lucid is ahead of me by a bit there, and I was very glad to see the shuttle on time because I don't want to break that record. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about undocking from the mirror. The last time we spoke, uh, you expressed some concerns about the safety of the mirror, Jerry. Um, now that it has a new oxygen generator and some other equipment, are you feeling a little bit better about the safety of it? I feel better. I think Mike uh, Fole, who took my place, still has some challenges ahead. Um, but we did the best we could to get it, the mirror in shape for Mike, and I think it's in better condition than it was. Uh, Charlie and the crew brought along a lot uh, more needed supplies, uh, equipment, and so I think we're leaving Mike in, in uh, reasonable condition. On the other hand, I think there's still challenges to be faced. And Charlie, do you want to add anything to that? Mike's off to a really good start. Uh, Jerry uh, made a diligent effort to inventory things and, and show him the layout the best he could. And, and so I think Mike's a lot more comfortable than Jerry himself was at this point in his mission. And so that's going to be a great start for Mike. Uh, Jerry, we owe a big debt of credit him for the work that he did in a very tight timeline when the shuttle was getting ready to come aboard. He had a lot of work to do to, to get it as ready as it is. All right, Charles Precor, thank you so much for those thoughts. Also, Jerry Linger and the rest of the crew. Safe journey home, everybody. I was going to say, we're all very, very proud here in the metropolitan Detroit area of uh, a native son. Uh, four months in space, uh, how do you feel? Uh, what kind of an adjustment uh, have you got coming here? I'll tell you, I've adjusted very well to space, and uh, that means it's going to be maybe a little tougher adjusting to get back to Earth. Uh, right now up here I feel as natural as, uh, as walking down on Earth uh, six months ago. So uh, it's going to be a readjustment uh, getting my Earth legs back. Well, the next major event uh, 
from our point of view, is the International Space Station, which we plan on uh, launching the parts of that beginning next year. And that should become operational sometime around the year 2000, and we hope that it will operate for another 10 to 15 years or more. All of this is in preparation for someday sending humans onto Mars. And, of course, that's a dream of all of ours, is to see people go to Mars someday and expand the human race off the planet Earth and, and onto more exciting places in the universe. Oh, boy. Jerry Lininger, we have this question for you. We know that you were aboard Mir. Could you tell us what it was like and how you feel the mission went? I think the mission went very well. We had, you know, 100% success, uh, accomplished all the goals that we uh, wanted to accomplish. And we also had some a lot of sidetracks along the way, uh, repairing some uh, equipment aboard Mir. But overall, we had a great mission, and it's been a great stay and, uh, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime experience.